Now comes our hard work mm -hmm. um, in terms of figuring out um, what we're going to do um, and have sort of discussions around the bill um, as um, as an entity. And um, one, I don't know if anyone um, whether you want us to um, just to go through it again, section by section, or whether. So maybe, we, um, Brian, could you walk us through the bill again? Um, and so we can either ask questions. Does that, does that process work well for you? Um, and, and then let's, whoever has amendments. Um, do you want to walk through the bill entirely and then, then discuss amendments that people have? OK. And then. There were, there were a couple of things that came up for quest, as questions for me after uh -huh. the um, okay. testimony last okay. night. Sure. So do you want to do that? Uh, I don't have any formal amendment about it, but do you want to do that during discussion time, or do you want her to just go through the whole thing first? Well, you know, if there's a question related to what, um, is it Lyme Thank you. Uh, it, um, I, I think it's a combination. Uh, no, I don't no. think it's. So why don't we walk through the book? Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. And That's then it's like, and let's write down our questions. Because a lot of questions, you know, questions just come up. Hi. Hello, good morning, committee. For the record, Bryn here for Legislative Council. Should I pull, pull it up here? Okay. And you can, if you don't have a paper copy of it, it is on, um, some of the bills, and they will change anything. Thank you. Okay, so I'm here to walk through H57 again. And we'll start with section one. This is the section that sets out the legislative intent behind the bill which is that um, the act is intended to safeguard the right to abortion in Vermont by ensuring that right isn't denied, restricted, or infringed upon by a governmental entity. Section 2 sets out a new chapter in Title 18, the first subchapter of which is called the Freedom of Choice Act. And the new section 94 and 93 sets out three separate individual reproductive rights. And the first is that every individual has the fundamental right to choose or refuse contraception or sterilization. The second is that every individual who becomes pregnant has the fundamental right to choose to carry a pregnancy to term, to give birth to a child, or, or to have an abortion. And the third is that a fertilized egg, embryo, or fetus shall not have independent rights under Vermont law. The second section in this new subchapter um, prohibits interfering with that reproductive choice. So it provides, subsection A there provides that a public entity, as defined later on in the bill, shall not, <clears throat> in the regulation or provision of benefits, facilities, services, or information, deny or interfere with a person's choice to choose or refuse contraception or sterilization, or to choose to carry a pregnancy to term, to give birth to a child, or to obtain an abortion. So it refers back to those individual rights that were just outlined in the previous section. Subsection B is a prohibition on um, law enforcement prosecuting a person for inducing their own abortion. I'm sorry, say that again for me. Section B, it prohibits law enforcement for prosecuting a person criminally for inducing or trying to induce their own abortion. Subchapter sub two, um, these are the prohibitions on access to abortion. So this is where we define um, healthcare provider um, and public entity. And as a reminder, we define healthcare provider as a person, partnership, or corporation, including a healthcare facility that's licensed in the state or otherwise authorized by law to provide professional healthcare services to per people during their medical care, treatment, or confinement. And a public entity is defined as all three branches of state government or any agency, department, office, or subdivision of state government, or any elective or appointive officer or employee within state government. 
and subdivision B provides that a public entity also includes municipalities or any agencies, departments, offices, or subdivisions of municipal government, including elected or appointed officers. The next section, 9497, prohibits a public entity from doing four things. First, the public entity can't deprive a consenting individual of the choice to terminate that individual's pregnancy. A public entity can't interfere with or restrict the choice of a consenting individual to terminate the individual's pregnancy. So they can't prohibit it and they can't restrict it. Sub three, a public entity shall not prohibit a healthcare provider who's acting within the scope of their license from terminating a pregnancy or assisting in the termination of a pregnancy. And then same language here um, as section subdivision two there, a public entity shall not interfere with or restrict the choice of a healthcare provider acting within the scope of his, his or her license from terminating a pregnancy or assisting in the termination of a pregnancy. And then the last section, 9498, is the enforcement clause. And this provides that a person who's injured as a result of a violation of that previous section that we just went through has a private right of action against a public entity for injunctive relief. And the second, and then subdivision B there, says that the court can also award reasonable costs and attorney's fees to a person who substantially prevails in their action against the public entity. Thank you. Um, Teresa, you had questions. I did, but I think they might have been answered on further review. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the testimony, several people last night during testimony, um, uh, well, this is in section 9494, paragraph B, page, uh, page four. Um, no state or local law enforcement should prosecute any individual for do uh, the people they're focusing on any individual not reading the second clause of that sentence um, well, excuse sure. me. it's um, really a woman woman and her <laughs> it's speaking to the woman herself people were inferring that it meant anybody you know any pack job could uh, get away with doing because what was running through my mind was um, knowing that there are some insurances that do not cover um, abortion so that um, you know perhaps people with not sufficient means to pay for that themselves might seek services from somebody who might be less than desirable and I certainly would want them to have some kind of relief under this law if if they had that but I, this is very specific, is that not true, to the individual themselves? Yes, and I did hear some of the comments that you're referring to that um, misconstrued this term. It's just about a person who's trying to induce or inducing their own abortion. So is there, um, so I guess the follow-up question is, um, is there any protection for that individual who might ha not have sufficient money or insurance coverage to have uh, an abortion in a, you know, by qualified medical professionals and end up getting it from, you know, some person who then causes them harm. Is there? Yes, yeah, so nothing, nothing about H57 interferes with existing um, tort law. So people have um, a right to recovery under our civil statutes for um, negligence. Uh, any provider who provides um, care that is considered negligent or um, any sort of ma professional malfeasance, um, people have a cause of action against the, in those circumstances. So nothing about H57 changes that. And so um, let's just say something horrible happens and you know the person dies and uh, uh, is there any right to criminal action against somebody in that situation? Um, I guess I would need to know some more specifics to be able to answer that question. Um, so under the scenario where you know, somebody sought out uh, to have a private abortion from a non-licensed medical professional, or it might not even be a medical professional, I, 
Um, so typically our criminal statutes require some kind of um, malicious intent. So um, it, I, it really is pretty fact specific depending on the situation. But a person would certainly have um, a, a civil right under the wrongful death statute, for example, um, of recovery. But again, our criminal statutes do require, um, there's an intent requirement for the prosecution under criminal law. So depending on the cir circumstances, um, a person may be able to be prosecuted under criminal law for, for providing an abortion, but it depends on the circumstances. If they are a physician, then they would sue under malpractice, just yes. like for any other procedure. That would yeah, I'm not talking about uh -huh. um, physicians. I'm talking about in the situation where somebody else. You know, like the gentleman we had testified here, he had a pad in his own pocket um, because of the situation, and it wasn't covered by insurance. And you know, so I'm sure there are other people out there who are in that same situation, but can't come up with ten or fifteen thousand dollars to have a procedure. And so, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't. I haven't. I don't travel in those circles, so I have no idea about what's out there. Um, so I just, I just wanted to make sure that women and their families aren't losing anything under this language. And I don't believe that they are, okay. at least from what I'm no. understanding. And, and the testimony we heard yesterday from the husband of the woman who had to um, fly to Colorado, the procedure was not covered in, and was not. Right, he wasn't. It didn't, it didn't meet New York's. Um, right. Which is, I don't, I don't know if all insurance carriers, depending upon your policy, would cover the procedure here. Did yeah, we find that out? We, we found out about Medicaid. I found out about Medicaid. I'll see if Jen has, um, uh, I asked um, for clarification. I'll see if Jen has gotten back to me. May I just make a comment? Absolutely. Uh, obviously, right from the beginning, I said I think this is an unnecessary uh, <coughs> bill, uh, that the, the the right to abortion already exists in the state of Vermont, and there's really no reason to put this law into effect. And obviously, it would save a lot of time if we just decided we don't need this bill. And so I was curious if there are other members on this uh, on this uh, committee that feel the same way I do, that it's an unnecessary bill. And, I said uh, that in the beginning. Hmm? I said that in the beginning. Right. So, obviously, it would save a lot of time. We wouldn't have to mark it. Um, mark it up. So, Carl, now I don't know if you wanted to take a position or... Um, you know, well, okay. We did a straw poll. Um, um, I think we've done we'll, we'll yeah. do another straw poll. We'll do a straw poll. Who thinks this um, proceeding is unnecessary? Um, I think it's the proceeding? Proceeding with the bill. Proceeding with the bill. I think the bill. Oh, okay. I think okay. it's unnecessary. Please raise your hand. The, this is the bill, right? That's yeah, what right. You can raise your hand or point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three. Who, um, who thinks um, moving forward on so, in some aspects of this bill is important? Madam Chair, yes. can you rephrase that, please? You said some aspects of this bill. Well, we're going to probably I'm talking about the whole bill. Um, so we want to keep working? That's, okay. Who I, wants to keep working on this bill? And um, who wants to keep working on this bill? Please raise your hand. Okay. Steph? That does it for me. Okay. All right. Um, other questions that you um, have? So I do have a proposed amendment. Okay. Um, and I, I did talk with Martin. Mm -hmm. um, Lalonde. Uh, Martin Lalonde is um, from uh, House Judiciary. Okay. And um, House Judiciary, I'm not a lawyer and I don't play lawyers on TV. And so I've been talking to um, Maxine <laughs> and to um, in terms of some of the concerns um, and questions that people have had in terms of um, aspects, in terms of what works and what doesn't, um, and what, where people are concerned. And um, so um, Representative Lalonde is on House Judiciary and is a lawyer. And I realize I have my, my, my first favorite lawyer, lawyer over here, um, but Martin is my district mate. 
Bryn's job is to um, write mm -hmm. what I think is the right response. And when we were talking about um, uh, what I would call intimate details of the law, I mean, I get that, OK, there's tort. I, saw, I learned, you know, but so that's. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I can't say to Bryn, is this the right thing to do? And she's going to say, what, what do you want it to do? <laughs> and I'm going to go, well, I, I want to make it. And, well, how do you want to do that? Because <laughs> she can't take um, the size. Yeah. yeah. Um, so my amendment um, is regarding the phrase at the bottom of page 3 under section 9493, the very last paragraph, paragraph C. And in talking with Representative Lalonde from Judiciary, um, he also has some concerns about this particular phrase. Um, he has a different um, idea about how to fix it. Um, and uh, my, uh, so we have differing ideas about how to fix it. So um, my idea is to eliminate it. Um, so that's essentially what this amendment is. Well, I'm trying to keep talking and passing around. Front table here. Um, so there may be some additional language coming our way about this in committee here shortly. So, um, so we might have more than one option to look at. So essentially, my idea is to eliminate this. Um, to eliminate section C, where it says fertilized egg embryo or fetus shall not have independent rights under Vermont law. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, um, so we heard um, in testimony that uh, in criminal statute, it's already been determined through the Oliver case that um, a live birth constitutes a person. And, uh, and so I feel like this is already covered in, um, in law. Uh, in case law, at least, and um, that um, that this was a particular issue, this paragraph, for uh, a lot of people, and that I, I feel like it's already covered in, uh, been dealt with by the Vermont Supreme Court, so it's my proposal to um, eliminate that paragraph. You mean the section C? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, I would um, I have a proposed substitute amendment. Um, I, I agree with um, Teresa that there's been a lot of concern about what that means. And um, uh, and I propose that we keep the language, um, but that we say that it shall not be considered a person for purposes of Vermont's criminal statutes. And I have this in writing and I can get it around. But to to, to separate so that so that um, we separate the the criminal mm -hmm. from the tort, and that will re that would a retain <coughs> retain the tort uh, the tort recovery that we have under current law, and b I believe it would answer the question that um, was raised by one of our witnesses about what happens when you try to get insurance coverage for some kind of in vitro um, um, treatment. Um, um, when it, that some of the you know there are there are some advances that are being made now in um, I'm going to call it fetal surgery because I think that's what it amounts to but something like that and he was concerned that that, right. that this might this might allow the insurance company to say we don't have to do that and so this this would limit limit this phrase exclusively to um, um, to criminal to the criminal sanctions um, and. I, I know that I know we had testimony from somebody who was unhappy about um, um, the death of her children in a car accident, um, but she was also injured, and, and, and she has a right. She has a right um, to work under the criminal statutes, and and under the wrongful death act, act the statute, she might even have a right to sue for, for damages. 
So I think, you know, and, and we're talking, and be clear, in both of those cases, we're talking about remedial. We're talking about what you do after something horrible has happened. So, you know, which I feel less strongly about than, than what, what we have to protect people going forward. <laughs> I mean, you have a copy there. That's what I'm reading. We'll there. get. We'll get. I'm sorry. We'll get. Just, just for the record, I agree with Teresa's mm -hmm. version. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like taking it out too. Mm -hmm. Just because it's been so mis, so much misinformation out there. I think trying to split hairs between tort and and criminal. Uh, I think what you're doing is, again, drawing more attention that you don't need. I think eliminating that phrase altogether is the best way to go. Um, granted that, it might be, I, I mean, I think everybody understands the committee process and it will likely reappear <laughs> downstairs if it is eliminated here. I just am. Um, well, I felt, you know, I felt the need to have to introduce this amendment. At least yeah, not be, because you talked to somebody on that committee. Already. Yes. So it may, it may, it may stay up. Uh, yeah, I doubt it. But <laughs> yes. Can you speak to what the proposal was from this? The proposal that Sandy has is, is, is the proposal uh, that Martin um, is is uh, thinking about. Yeah. So, This is real. decision focus on defining when for the purposes of um yes it did it used the word person um, and it talked about for purposes of vermont's criminal statutes a person um, had to be born alive to be considered a person for those statutes and if you remember we talked about this the court said that because um the court always has to interpret criminal statutes very narrowly to ensure that um, it doesn't create new crimes um, based on its interpretation of existing criminal statutes. That's why it interpreted the word person in that statute very narrowly to only mean a person who's already been born alive, which again is the, is the um, common law rule. And when was the Oliver decision? 1988. Can I ask another question? Absolutely. Um, um, so Representative Lalonde said, or he believed, um, that, and I think you were just confirming it, the common law definition um, of person, and says that in, in, as far as he knew that there wasn't any definition of person in Vermont statute that exists right now. Is that, do you? I think that that's right, yes. Um, I can confirm that. But, okay. Um, so for me, this this sentence um, uh, starts to define what is and is not a person, and I I believe that um, this is not the right place to do that. Just to correct the record, Oliver was decided in 1989. Okay. She's doing that. Um, if there's no definition of person, I can't understand why we, we want to put the word in. So I'm sorry. <clears throat> in our Title I, our general provisions, we have a de definition of person that includes any natural person, corporation, municipality, the state of Vermont, or any department, agency, or subdivision and any partnership, unincorporated association, or other legal entity. So that's why we typically use individual. Um, 
when we're talking about natural people in, our, in the statutes. Instead of instead of what? Instead of person, person. because person is defined to include corporate corporations. Entities. That's interesting. What what does natural person mean? That would be a natural. That would be a like you, for example. A, a, a living human being. Oh, okay. So. And, and, and so, a living human being. And then, then what that does to me, Brent, is I, I say, okay, what's a living human being? Is it somebody, something with a heartbeat? Well, as we discussed, for purposes of the criminal statutes, the Vermont Supreme Court has found a person to mean a person who is born alive, a living person who is. Um, has already been born. That was the Oliver case. Mm -hmm. so, but a corporation has status, but an unborn child does not. Yeah, right. I mean, that just seems absolutely absurd. So I'm, I'm hearing the, the concern about the use of the word person. Another way to accomplish my goal here would be to um, to keep the language that we have there and insert at the beginning of it for the purposes of the Vermont criminal statutes, a fertilized egg embryo or fetal sh shall not have individual rights. So so um, that that phrase that you have in front of you for purposes of Vermont's criminal statutes would be a preamble to what's already up on the board. And I don't have that in writing, but I can get it. Is that a change in current policy or practice? No. Clar clarification. Is it uh, inappropriate to reference a, an existing Supreme Court decision in a proposed bill? No, we have done we have done that before. I think that the the reason why we don't make a practice of doing it is because of the nature of um, jurisprudence from the Supreme Court. I, I think it sometimes it evolves over time. So it may become an outdated reference, but we have certainly done it in the past. So um, people, whether rightly or wrongly, believe that we were making new policy by saying this. And um, I still prefer to have it out, but it, depending upon how the committee mm -hmm. vote goes, um, I would, uh, if we have something that leaves it in, I would, I would prefer to see something that referenced the Supreme Court decision has already happened. Um, so people know that we're not making new policy in this regard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> just, just so I clearly understand what we're talking about. Does, does this mean, Bren, that, because Kyle mentioned this earlier, that a corporation would have status a, per, is, a person is a corporation, right? That's, I think, what you said. Yep. In the definition of a person. Mm -hmm. <coughs> have status? I, I'm not well, sure. Well, forget status. status. Is corporation a person? Well, as defined in Title I, um, the word person is defined to include corporation. So then they would have status under but, this bill, no, right? No. Because a person, I thought you said a person was a natural like me that was born. I guess I'm not sure what you mean by status under the bill. Or t can you tell me specifically what you mean by that? Well, when we said is, is not considered a person, <coughs> didn't we? This is it's a not considered a person. This is a proposal I, from, I understand that. from Sandy. I'm just trying to figure out what, what it is. If, if a corporation is considered a person under the definition, then a person here is the same thing. And, and my position is, why in heck would we want to have a corporation be as defined, be a person, and a fetus with a heartbeat not be considered a person, not, not being considered at all? That's what I'm, that's my point. I, um, I, I, I make myself clear. I believe that Topper is, um, talking about 
the proposal from Sandy, mm -hmm. which says that the fertilized egg, et cetera, would not be considered a person. Right. Yeah. And it doesn't matter to me whether, and, and, I, and I'm not a lawyer, but whether the term's tort or criminal, it doesn't matter to me. Either way, if a corporation is going to be considered a person, because the definition of a person says they are, mm -hmm. then I, 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 I understand. can't buy it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You said that very well. So did you. Yeah. Madam Chair, may I have leave to to substitute a substitute for my substitute? <laughs> um, you know, we are talking. <laughs> so, so I, at this so, moment, I would like to say that my substitute amendment would be the language that you see on the board under C, with the first five words being for purposes or six for purposes of Vermont's criminal statutes. A fertilized egg. Etc. shall not have independent rights. So, and we will, and, and if, you, if we need to have that in writing, we can do that mm -hmm. um, for you to look at. And I just want to be, I'm going to throw in front of what you asking me this question. Mm -hmm. So, the purpose of criminal law is not like going to the criminal Statutes. For purposes of, so if you look, if you look at what I gave you already, yeah. Yeah. Like those last, whatever it is, six words, yeah. would just be um, inserted um, as a preamble to Part C, mm -hmm. uh, line 18. So uh, so you're saying for the purposes of criminal statutes, a fertilized egg, oh my, we just lost that, <laughs> embryo <laughs> or fetus shall not have independent have independent, so going back to the language of, of the bill. You gotta add it in the permission to look fast. Hey, you guys are falling down on the yeah, It's true. It was a long day yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you get rid of the phone? No, the phone, the phone is right there. He put his fingerprint in it. Doesn't like the code anymore. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Carl. Unless the code is. I was inserting this. I say, in fact, in a criminal court, somebody trying to seek damages for the death of an embryo. You don't, there are no damages available under criminal law. Penalties are um, imposed by the state. Civil, okay. Right. All right. So, how, so if, if, um, let's say a uh, husband uh, or a male hurts a woman in late, late term and, and it results in the death of the embryo. Mm -hmm. All right. what, and criminal charges would be brought because there's been an attack on the woman. Okay. But could that attack also be uh, considered against the, the unborn embryo? So a could the man be charged with murder? No. No. And that's true currently. But this, um, this but would make it even clearer that. I don't know if it would be more like clear. I think it would. It just codifies what is existing law in Vermont. Um, it puts it into statute, uh, which is that a woman or a person can recover for a, um, an assault. A person can press charges. Law enforcement can bring charges for an assault against the person who was attacked, um, but not for murder. Um, okay. So I'm. Um, I like that they're taking it out because it, to me, it's a lot of my, a lot of things I've heard is this is really concerning to folks, and I don't. I'd like to understand why. I don't quite understand why it's really important to try to keep it in. So, because I, it sounds like it is law. We're not changing anything, whether or not it's in or out. And since I feel like a lot of people would be more comfortable with it out. I'd just like to understand why others are more comfortable with it. Again. So I'll speak for myself. Okay. I was speaking for myself. Yeah. Too. Um, I, I, we all know that, that what we're really talking about here is a small number of procedures that happen after, let's say, 22 or 23 weeks when time is critical. And so if, if you have an argument, if you can have, if somebody can go to court and get a, 
get a guardian appointed, uh, you can you can run run the clock for weeks and months. Um, and and I and that does not accord with my feeling that while a fetus is still in utero, that it's between the the mother and the and the the medical provider operating within their ethical standards to consider what is best, and that we shouldn't be opening it up for somebody on the street to come in and say, I have a better idea, and I'm going to judge. For me, and I'm not um, wed to the language in C, but in terms of how to do something to make it clear, the fact that this has become such a lightning rod is almost the reason to make it clear. Because it is a lightning, it's a lightning rod because people didn't, don't know what is the current, did not, don't understand what is the um, current legal landscape and what the Oliver decision um, has put forth um, and how that has impacted things. So for me, that's why it's important. Um, because the general, uh, the world out there thinks that we are carving new, new law. Now let's argue about whether we think that's right or wrong. And you know, Carl, you've been really clear. Now, you know, and so have you, Topper. Um, and I mean, and you can argue to change what has been our current process. But that, for me, is why it's important to put it in there, um, because people don't understand what is the legal framework now. I would, I would like to get some language cleared up. I'm just hearing legal framework and I'm hearing current law. Which is it? My understanding is there is no law. There's no current law. There's not a statute that addresses this currently. Okay, let me ask the question a different way, Brian. Is there a current law? The Oliver decision is current precedent by the Vermont Supreme Court that it interprets criminal statutes narrowly so that people have to be born alive in order to be considered a person for the, for the criminal statutes. What about the civil statute? And the, and the Valen Court decision, which was issued eight years, nine years earlier, found that a person could recover for the death of their fetus under the wrongful death statute, because that's a civil statute, so they interpreted, they interpreted it more broadly than the criminal statutes. So that is existing um, case law, which is, as you know, subject to, subject to change based on later decisions. Why couldn't that woman recover anything for the two kids she lost? What, the woman um, who you heard from over the phone? Yeah. I don't know the specifics of her case. Um, I don't know if she tried to bring a civil claim. Um, she could have. I think that her point was that um, she wasn't able to prosecute the person for murder. James. For the death of the, her fetus. Um, this is a what if and could be easy and possible. But, so having language in here that clearly defines that it's not, um, not a person, um, so then it would be codified, so to speak. Um, can somebody later on, when, like say somebody wants to bring a court case and try to get personhood for the purpose of criminal charges, like if you know, hit a woman and kill a baby, um, stuff, something like that, um, can they go back as precedent and say, well, Vermont made a law that says it's not a person, so up to people that have Well, Well, that, that would be the, the court would interpret that statute to mean that a, that, um, that a fetus would not be considered a purpose, a person for purposes of the criminal statute. Right. And they can use this as precedent. Exactly. Well, they would reaffirm. That's what the court does: is it interprets it interprets the laws. Yeah. So it would it would look to that. Um, I'm just going back to the civil status. Or, uh, what with this wording, I know she's saying specifically criminal, but if it is. Applies to the criminal uh, code or whatever. Uh, would this also then apply to the civil? 
No, I think that's why um, I think that's why the language was presented was that so it would be specific that it's only for the purposes of the criminal statutes and the court would be free to interpret our civil statutes um, to include fetuses as, as, a, as a person. Um, does it complicate matters? Um, Sandy is, is, is noodling about for the purposes of cr the criminal statute. Does it muddy waters to, to say something about this doesn't preclude tort or whatever that language is? I just read my mind. I wrote that down. But I was going to wait till we had adult online and okay, sorry. offered it. <laughs> <laughs> Substitute. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so, so, I mean, Brynn, does that muddy the waters to put something? So it's it, to, it, to, 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 um, to be clear somehow in your magic of being making things clear. To be clear that it's only for criminal, and because we still don't know what that means, and it is okay. Um, it is. Um, a fetus, a person could, um, um, a mother, or I guess a father, someone could um, get Recover damages under for, the wrongful death under statute. Wrong, under the wrongful death statute. Yes, it just it would just need to, it would be up to you to define um, how broad you want to go. If you want to specifically say, uh, for purposes of the wrongful death statute, um, a fetus can be considered a person, or if you want to be clear that under any um, common law negligence claim. Um, because many of the many of the tort claims are actually common law claims, so we don't have specific statutes to oh, okay. refer to. Can you say something just like under tort? Under civil law. Mm -hmm. Or under civil, civil law. law. Mm -hmm. Carl. Obviously, I'd prefer that we make an affirmative statement that an uh, embryo is a person uh, beyond viability. And I know this, you know, it certainly appears this committee would be unwilling to do that. And accordingly, I think the best thing we can do. Do you want us to do a straw poll? I mean, I'm serious. Do you hmm? want us, um, do you want us to do a straw poll on that? Sure, that would be great. Okay. And so, I mean, I, I would like this paragraph or part C to be replaced by something that gives personhood to, uh, uh, fetus beyond viability. Right. That's a that's a that's a that's a different amendment. I know it is, but I was prefacing yeah. then uh, that given yeah. that uh, assuming that would fail. Okay. Uh, Don't assume uh, I, I would then. Hmm? Don't assume anything. Okay. Well, let's wait for James. <laughs> so I just want to be clear on what you're like. I'm not totally clear. I, I'm going 180 degrees from what we were right, talking about. Right. That's what. That's. Okay. I, I want right, to be so, sure of that. But uh, given that I probably will not prevail, okay, I would say that the best thing we could do is to leave this portion out, like. Representative Wood has recommended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This goes to the heart of the whole issue, and this is what's, what's you know tearing up the, the, the both sides of this equation. I, I think if we leave it out, it's the best thing we could do. All right. So, but it's not what I would like to do. What I would like to do uh, is to uh, put in an affirmative statement that says that uh, the fetus has personhood is a person after after viability, okay, mm -hmm. which is like 24 weeks, okay? And the chair has said, should we take a straw poll on that? Okay, so that would be fine with me. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you know, this is, okay. um, this is our <coughs> place to have, just have these hard, have, 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 make these hard decisions. Okay. And, and, and that would be, I mean, and so let's take a straw poll, and um, Carl's proposal would be to change what is current policy and practice. 
right? Tell, tell me what that means, madam. It's specifically addressed in paragraph, paragraph C, okay, or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> Fertilize a embryo fetus shall not have independent. Uh, that, so that you, the, you wanted to say shall have independent um, <clears throat> rights? Well, shall be considered a person Absolutely. beyond viability. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, so that would be a that would be a departure from existing law, and it would essentially criminalize abortion um, past a certain point in pregnancy. Understood. <laughs> okay, Carl Strawpole. So, oh, are we polling? Yeah, we're polling because. So. Okay, you're. I need to. Before I answer anything, I need to clearly understand what I'm going to vote on. Is this straw polls? What I'm yeah. going to straw poll? Okay. Okay. What I'm saying. Are you saying, are you saying take this out of here? Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry. Are you saying take C out altogether and replace it with an affirmative statement that? Okay. I'd like to. If I'm going to, uh, that, yeah. that's a huge decision. Mm -hmm. In principle, I agree with what you're talking about, but I want to see it in writing so I understand it. Um, so, Carl, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying as well. So, are you saying unequivocally? Because um, what Bryn just said, I think, is important that, that would, it would mm -hmm. make abortion at any time after viability illegal. Um, and, you know, I really um, understood the witness and I went to his web page and the stuff that we heard yesterday and my personal feeling is that that would be a, a wrong move um, but I um, so I guess so are you I want to make sure that I understand that you're saying under any circumstance I, I presume we, we could possibly put some uh, parenthetical items around that but uh, essentially yes okay all right I want to make sure I understood so we I would just say that um, that without without exception, that would likely be ruled unconstitutional um, because there is Supreme Court precedent that says that you have to provide an exception um, for the life or health of the right. of the but, patient. But that I mean, but that doesn't mean that the fetus isn't a person. It just means that. Well, it would. You, I think I the, really the, the, pur the purpose of the purpose of that would mm -hmm. would be that. Um, a fetus could be considered a person for the purpose of the criminal statutes. Mm -hmm. So under our criminal statutes, if a fetus has personhood, then um, a provider and, and probably the, the, the patient could be crim could yeah. be prosecuted under the criminal statutes for an abortion. So, but it's not as simple as saying, like, because nothing in law is simple, right? It's not as simple as saying, except for these purposes. I mean, you kind of have to. Well, I um, think she's saying we could. No, right. You, you could. Uh, say except for the uh, life and or uh, physical health of the woman. Right? Yes, there would need to, in order for it to be upheld as a constitutional um, prohibition on abortion, it would need to contain exceptions. Mm -hmm. you, you know, like um, for the um, purpose of medical necessity for the fetus or mother kind of thing. I mean, That's, but, um, that is one way to... But you'd have to be fairly specific, right? Or, um, it's, different states have done it differently, and it depends on what you, how, what kind of exceptions you would like to create. Um, but the Supreme Court has said that you have to create an exception for the health of the yeah. patient. Yeah. yeah. And it's. Yeah. Right. Um, I've read the Roe versus Wade and the other things that you gave me to look at, and I'm utterly confused right now. Um, could you state what? we have right now federally, because we have nothing, as far as I know, in the state except that all of the thing that you were talking about, which I didn't know about until today. So what is Roe versus Wade and all the other stuff that, you know, Casey and all the mm -hmm. other things you gave me to read, where does that leave us today as we sit around this table in terms of what Carl's saying? Yeah, so, the, so the Supreme Court decisions, um, they 
with the, the role of the Supreme Court is to interpret the Constitution, right? Yeah. Um, so what the Supreme Court has done in the decisions about abortion is it has ruled on the constitutionality of other states' abortion restrictions. Correct. And that is a signal to the rest of the states about what the states can and cannot do in their regulation of what is considered a fundamental right. So, um, because Vermont doesn't currently restrict the right to abortion, correct, um, we have an unrestricted right to the, to, to abortion. Mm -hmm. So, what the others, what those decisions do is they should, um, if Vermont decided to make a policy decision to restrict the right to abortion, it a, a good move would be to look at those Supreme Court decisions and see what it what the Supreme Court has ruled on in terms of the constitutionality of other states' reg abortion restrictions. So it's sort of a signal or a guide to the states on what they can and can't do in their regulation of abortion. Okay, did, did, did it regulate anything? Did what regulate? Did the Supreme Court itself? Yeah. No, so the, the role of the Supreme Court is to interpret the Constitution, yeah, and the states that. are reserved the right to the police power and the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution. That's just sort of how our, our government is set up. So it's up to the states to regulate abortion if they choose to do so. Okay, so in the state of Pennsylvania, as an example, or any of the other states that the Supreme Court ruled on, is there any restriction at all to abortion at any time? Yes, in Pennsylvania, that's what, yes. That's what I thought there was. New York as well. Because and, they, and everybody wants to, they're worried about Roe versus Wade being overturned. Everybody. I'm aware everybody. Well, I don't know about everybody, but I'm, I'm just people. The, the, I've heard the reason for these pieces of legislation in the different states is because they're scared of what's going on in Washington and the, the uh, appointments to the Supreme Court and a bill, I mean, uh, a action coming through that will do away with Roe versus Wade. If you want Roe versus Wade to stay where it is, then why don't we just leave this thing alone? That was the reason I, in the first place, said we don't even need this legislation. You better, if, if you want to have an abortion, fine. Uh, you're better off the way it is right now. And if we get this companion bill that we're talking about done, it will put in process um, ways to prevent the number of abortions that we have now. When I heard one in four women have an abortion, that, that was, to me, it was terrible that they had to go through this. Why, and that's why I'm talking about having things in place that, that prevent that decision to be, have to be made. We wouldn't even be talking about this if we gave away, and, and if there would be very few that missed all those things that you can do to prevent uh, conception. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, with respect to Carl, um, we're coming back to the last struggle we just took. If this is by changing this, it's do we want to move forward with this or not? Because if we change this to the proposal, we're going to be back to the kind of the first struggle we took, which is do we do nothing? And we already have established that we want to move forward on this, so we should either take a vote on this and get back to what this is, Sandy's proposal, or? Or more. Or more. Or So I'm just saying we're. OK, yeah, no, I mean, I think um, I just want to give people the opportunity to say what they need to say um, and to say it again and to be clear. Um, and Topper has been very clear that he doesn't think we should be moving forward. We should let it. Um, stay and um, hard as it is, the rest of the um, a majority of the committee wants to move forward. No, we know that. Now I'm going to ask a question of all the committee. Do you clear, does everybody clearly understand? This is a big deal we're talking mm -hmm. about here. Yes. Does everybody clearly understand what Kyle wants? Mm -hmm. No. Yes. No. I, don't, I have no idea what the guy, what the parameters would be. I, I, I would need to see it in writing. That's what I said too. I need to see it in writing because I don't clearly understand. 
I agree with the principle I think you're trying to bring forward, but um, I, I, I want to make sure I clearly understand it before I take a poll, any kind of poll vote or anything. Yeah. Well, I, at this point, you know, since we don't have something to write, and I, I think it's something that would be defeated, I, I will withdraw what I said. Okay? So we can move forward and then decide between these two amendments that are in writing from Sandy and from uh, Teresa. And I, I, I want to be clear. This is this is the beginning of our working on this. And you know, we go through page one, two, three, and four, and then we come back and we look at it. And if someone goes, wait a minute, this is confusing. Wait a minute. I mean. That this is the teacher in me. This is still the draft. Mm -hmm. We are still drafting and working on making um, age 57 um, something that the majority of the committee um, wants to move forward in whatever amendments there is. That's the legislative process. Um, so I'm for Teresa's proposed. Amendment. James, are you saying? Uh, which is to eliminate Section C. James. Well, I was going to say that I, I agree with Carl. Our views were going to be in the minority, but I wanted just to say for the record that I agreed in principle with what Carl was saying about the making an affirmation, but um, I also agree that if we can't do that, take, take the wording out with uh, Teresa. Are you looking for people well, to sure. talk about? Um, so, so we have two. Um, so I'm going to put this up. So we have to vote on whether, whether we want to the, the vote first on the substitute. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. This is why I'm not the speaker. Well, we, we, that's what we do on the floor. And, and in fairness, maybe if we're going to do that, maybe we should take the five minutes to have okay. the substitute in writing. So <coughs> I, I, I think I heard you, but so just by a protocol, we have to deal with yours first, right? Right. I, sure I, 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 think I, I think we vote. Do we vote on whether to substitute? We, we, we will vote on whether to substitute. Whether to substitute. Which? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, wait a minute. I thought we don't do that on the floor. Yeah, we do. Well, why didn't the substitute on the floor get voted on yesterday on the school? Because issue? it wasn't a substitute. It was. A, it was. A, it was not. It was. It, 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 it came later. It, it, it wasn't a substitute amendment yesterday. Because it only had. It's only going to happen if the amendment yesterday failed. Well, Teresa submitted something in writing mm -hmm. first. And Sandy made a substitute. Amendment to that. Okay. A substitute. And I offered a substitute. So and what, I, what I can't remember, I, what I remember, and you can, other people who've been here as long as I, longer, um, we, we vote on whether or not to consider the substitute. I think that's right. And then we vote on the substitute. And if, so if you say no, then it goes away. If and you say we, yes, we talk about the substitute. And if, and, if, and if it goes away, then we then we fall back to Teresa. Where's our parliamentary? <laughs> <laughs> that was Brenda left to put it in writing. Is that? Yeah, Brenda left to put it in writing. I would like to see it. Yeah, yeah. Is that the substitute? Substitute. Oh, that. Okay. All right. We're 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 not. I'm not going to put it in that order right now. I would like to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Madam Chair, just so that I understand how things operate now. Yesterday, I'm sitting on the floor of the House, and uh, Act 46, there's there's uh, amendment that was on the floor, and there was an amendment that we didn't bring up. We're going to bring it up today. <coughs> that amendment is a, is a substitute, I thought, for the Sherman Amendment. But we couldn't get to that. And I don't remember, I don't, yeah, until we voted the, on the Chumlin Amendment. It wasn't presented as a substitute. Yeah, it was done as a different legislative process. And the Schumann Amendment that we talked about yesterday was actually done as a substitute for her previous amendment, which was also not really talked about yesterday. And I, I believe the reason that we did it is that Heidi was promised a vote on her mm -hmm. amendment. That's, yeah. that's what mm -hmm. I was talking about. And we wanted to, yeah, she wanted to vote on both as separate entities. 
So we changed the game. Sort of. But no. So I'm going to change the game here then. Um, I, I don't. It, can, it was not offered as a substitute. Okay. All right. So. Um, I didn't. I didn't put this amendment in to to uh, take the paragraph out. See, but you did. Yes, I did. You want to change the game? Yeah. Um. What I'd really like is a two-minute break. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, that, that allows us to kind of talk to each other, and I know what exactly. You know, Okay, <laughs> but I know what's going to happen. Well, um, I, 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 uh, Julie, I want my amendment to be voted on. So if, so, voting, was, uh, so if voting so if on have, Sandy's amendment first negates Patrick, my amendment being so voted on, I have a problem with that. So there was some poetry yesterday. Patrick. Poetry. That's okay. Oh, I see. You wrote a poem. So if we do approve Sandy's. Then my so amendment would be voted on at all. Because it would be the substitute. Yeah. You raised a good point. Okay. All right. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I actually think that yeah. a well, five minute break is yeah. I know, but Topper's going to freak out if we have a five minute break. Okay. okay. And so, um, and, and I'm, I'm not going to freak out. Yes, you are. Because I know you. I know Thank you very much. I needed to go to the second floor. Um, so the where we left it is voting on um, Teresa's um, proposal of amendment um, to uh, H57, which would be to um, remove um, a C, a fertilized egg, embryo, or fetus shall not have independent rights under Vermont law to eliminate that section from uh, section 9493. To, to, uh, to clarify number C, based on what Bryn, our, um, our legislative council, has said, does not create new law. And, and to take it out does not and change to take it, and, and, and to take it out yeah. does not change. It doesn't change law. Um, that um, Section C is based on jurisprudence coming out of the, I'll, I'm looking at Brent going, is that the right way to say it? Um, um, based on the Oliver decision of 1989 that um, there needs to be a live birth, um, at a live birth there is a person. So leaving it in is not new in terms of the way we handle things in Vermont, and taking it out does not change what is in Vermont. So how do you do this here? I'm curious. Do you call our names in order? Well, it's, you know, how do people want it? Do you want this to be on record, and then we will, we can do it. Um, in the book? We can do it in the book, <laughs> and, um, or we can take a straw poll. Um, what do people drop all? Because we're not voting on the. Right, we're just voting on this one. We sometimes we sometimes we. I mean, oh. it, so it really is up to what is the the. Um, a, I mean, <clears throat> a straw poll is fine, but if people want it to be part of the formal um, record, we can do it that way as well. Well, we would we would, depending upon the results of the straw poll. We would then see a different version of the bill at some point, and depending upon whatever other mm -hmm. conversations we have, and then we would, we would. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I'm understanding now. It's clicking with me what you said. Do you want it to be a? It, I, I said it doesn't matter to me, honestly. It just it. Um, okay. I just want the opportunity to have people to vote on it. Straw poll or not? I think it, it should be up to anybody who wants to have their vote recorded. Does anyone want to have their their vote recorded That's on this? Point, Carl? Well, I mean, I, I guess it, in a way it's recorded because, I mean, all the proceedings we have here, one way or another, it is, you know. You're on the record. I, I, we're yeah. on the record. Well, I mean, I, I, I'm not quite sure. I, I thought the only reason we took an actual vote in the book was an up or down on the bill. Mm -hmm. And then no, no, we other things that we talk are discussion, discussional and if we take a straw poll, it's recorded, so I, I, I don't have a problem okay. with the straw poll. Okay. okay. Um, so all those um, in favor of removing Section C of 9493, which sets out the 
three um, beginnings. This is Teresa's. So. Teresa's men. So to remove um, the third piece, which um, the third the third statement. <clears throat> the bill starts out with statements that everyone has a fundamental right to choose or refuse contraception or search sterilization. The second one being every individual who becomes pregnant has the fundamental right to choose to carry pregnancy to term, to give birth to a child, or to have an abortion. And to remove, Teresa's amendment is to remove the third um, piece which is that a fertilized egg, embryo, or fetus shall not have independent rights under Vermont law, um, and that we understand from Bryn that keeping it in reflects what is current jurisprudence, and taking it out doesn't change it. If it's taken out and there's further case law, um, that has a different decision than Oliver, then that changes what is common practice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So just clarifying. Yes. Right. Okay. All those in favor of removing C, please raise your hand high. This is to remove, remove C. Minutes. You you want to raise your hand, Carl? <laughs> oh, maybe he doesn't. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> hi, hi, she said. Carl. Oh, hi. One, okay. two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, it's removed. Six to five. Okay. And the other amendments. Yes. Okay. I um. Yeah, let me pass it around. It's a short change um, under the very beginning legislative intent, section one. So you see where it says, the General Assembly intends this act to safeguard the right to abortion in Vermont by ensuring that right is not denied, restricted, or infringed by a government entity. And I would add the sentence, nothing about this act shall be construed to contravene, which to me means contradict. Anybody like me don't okay. really know what contradict is. <laughs> um, 18 U.S.C. section 1531, um, which criminalizes the act of a partial birth abortion. In the, it's the 2003 case that criminalizes the act of partial birth abortion. So in other words, because we, it, again, this is another one of those things that doesn't change anything in this or in law, um, but it does clarify it because we've heard, or at least I've heard through um, my emails, that a lot of folks are confused about this and concerned about um, that this allows for partial birth abortion and it is illegal and I wanted to make it really clear. We did hear a lot of testimony last night where people were <coughs> um, uh, believed um, erroneously that H57 would allow um, partial birth abortion. So what your amendment is trying to is, is, is referencing, and Bryn, can I just ask, yes. um, is that what this does? <laughs> yes, it is. that's exactly right. Um, I, the only thing I would correct is that it's a, it was a congressional action, not a case. Oh, okay. the, the 2003 um, act that Congress passed that prohibits a partial birth abortion. That did, did what? The it's last the, sentence. The 2003 act of Congress to prohibit partial birth abortion. Yeah. So does this, does inserting this in terms of legislative intent does it change anything about what has been happening in Vermont? No. Does it carve new ground no. going forward? It makes it clear. Makes it clear. Okay, so I'm saying, what, what are you trying to make clear again? I'm still trying to... That um, partial birth abortion is illegal. Mm -hmm. 
Curious. I know that we have the the case um, or the the congressional action listed here. I'm wondering if it makes sense to name it, name what it's called, like in the in the bill, just so it's super clear, because the average person reading that wouldn't know what that is. Yeah. I don't know. I would be happy to do that if the committee would like, or if you would like. Sure. Does everyone agree that that would be good? Or? I think it's satisfactory the way it is. Okay. Um, I, and we talked about this actually. Okay. That she, um, Brent's going to give me the actual um, wording so that I could use it on the floor so that okay. if we have to talk about it. And so it's probably, I'm fine with whatever everyone else thinks, but I would say go with what Nancy is saying. Seems fine. Okay. I'm good with that. more about this. Are we ready to straw poll um, whether this is a word? I'm trying to remember why we changed it. Now this is up to the legislative intent. Right? So right here, legislative intent, mm -hmm. here's the section you're just adding this sentence. And nothing about this act shall be construed to contravene 18 U.S.C. 1551. Loading? Can you, can you get, get the antenna up there? This is the new part. There. Perfect. Thank you. So folks around here can see it would be, see section one, it would be added to section one. Actually, construed to contravene 18 U.S.C. 1531, which is the Congressional Act that criminalizes partial birth abortion. All those in favor of adding that sentence, please raise your hand high. Okay, Jessica. Okay. We're adding that, and you're reporting the bill. <laughs> <laughs> About dying. I've been thinking about who's going to do that. Um, other amendments? Good. Mm -hmm. take this formal and to have someone make a motion and then we discuss and debate and then we take a vote. Um, we would want to have it. Um, I think because of this, um, yeah, um, I don't know whether, I mean, do you want a clean copy of what is our proposal <coughs> now? which would be to, re to remove um, that section and to add that 
sentence? Could you review what's what's the next step here? Okay, let's say assume we vote this out today, okay, mm -hmm. um, or, or tomorrow or whenever. You right. Decide. Okay. What uh, we would then go to judiciary. Or it what? goes on notice. Mm -hmm. um, I had um, asked if people would um, check with their respective leadership if they'd be willing to um, take it up off notice for the purposes of referring it to judiciary. Um, but what, whether that happens or not, when we vote it out, mm -hmm. it will be on notice. Mm -hmm. And it will, when it is um, on notice, when it comes up the next day for action, it would immediately be referred to do this year. Um, so there will not be a vote on the bill mm -hmm. on the floor mm -hmm. until, uh, you know, on the content of, you know, there, there will not be that kind of, of vote. Um, mm -hmm. Say that to everybody, you know, this is the beginning of the legislative um, process in the House. Um, there is another committee, for those of you who were at the public hearing, that will be um, looking at it. They're the people who understand what the word tort and mm -hmm. civil action means. Mm -hmm. I think we should move forward. We've been talking, we've heard lots of testimony on both sides of the issue, and mm -hmm. we need to make sure judiciary feels they have their time to mm -hmm. do their good due diligence, and I, I think we Unlock, and it's time to move on. Okay. Um, my, um, do we want to have a clean copy? I think we need to have a clean copy of the bill. And although it's only two um, changes, I think we need it needs to be a strike off. Okay. Um, so that may take 15, 20 minutes. Yes, or less if you are anxious to move it. It can probably be done in about five minutes. You know, I, I have a feeling based on the dead silence, when, you know, and I think people are, are we're ready um, to have this hard vote and move forward. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, Let me give it to you. Why don't we give you 10? And um, so now, um, <laughs> just goodbye. <laughs> um, cool. OK. Does that mean we get 10, or are you going to make us do something else? No. I think we, I think we could all use 10. Well, I, you know, I, why, yes. I mean, this is, I, I, let's all take 10. Um, but while we're taking 10, um, changing subjects or whatever, having no idea what's going to happen on the floor this afternoon mm -hmm. um, in terms of how long we will be discussing Act 46 and amendments or how short we will be. Um, I or Sandy um, will be standing up during announcements and either saying, come back to the, <laughs> to, um, the committee or if it's like, I mean, if it's 3.30, um, maybe we could do, okay, if it's 3.30, we could do um, H85, which is on, which is both, it be in your email. it's in your email yeah. and it is on um, our webpage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we would come, I mean, if it's like 3.30, we will come back and we will vote on that as opposed to, um, nursing homes. as opposed to nursing homes. Um, and if it is after that time, if it's significantly after that time, um, I would ask that people come in at 9 o'clock on um, Friday morning. That's tomorrow. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, 9 o'clock tomorrow to vote on that bill. My, my assumption, and I have to say I need to rely on my vice chair and um, ranking member, I was not part of part and parcel of a large part of the discussion on this bill. And 
Um, and so I am trusting the committee process to, to um, if, that, 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 they're, that where we are now is pretty much, for that bill, that we're pretty much copacetic. And those are the only two changes. Yes. <clears throat> so committee and for people who are on the sidelines, unless there are further amendments that get proposed, this will be a two-step process. First, we have to agree to the amendment. This is an amendment to the bill as introduced. We vote on that, and then we vote on the bill. Just <clears throat> so the whole bill is the amendment? Yeah. And then, and then the amendment we vote on. Right. OK. <laughs> this is the way we did it. OK. Right? I kind of like to vote this way. I believe that's, that's well, cool. I believe that is the process. I'm looking to my two lawyers. You're voting to accept the amendment right. as your um, proposal? And we're voting and to, to pass it out of committee. Right. Madam Chair, I just have one question. Um, Health care provider is, is defined here. Um, is there a definition of that some other place too? Or is this the definition brought from some other place? The definition is is a new definition that is reflective of the way the health care provider is defined elsewhere in Title 18. And Title 18 is what? Is the, um, our title relating to health law. And we defined it for a reason, right? You, you defined, yep, because you use it in this section, 9497. Public entity shall not prohibit a health care provider. Discussions. We're, we're voting on the substitution. We're, 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 we, are voting, voting, we are voting on the strike call. Okay. We are voting on um, the um, draft 1.1, which adds a sentence and takes away yeah. um, sec, um, Another a, a provision. Yeah. Is there further discussion on this amendment? The clerk shall begin to call the roll. Representative Thon. Before I vote, um, I want to make sure I'm voting on the right thing here, on what I'm voting on. We're voting on the changes we just made. Yes. We're yes. not voting on the bill yet. Right. We are not yet voting on moving the bill out of committee. Yes. Representative Haas. Yes. Representative Rumstead. Yes. Representative Rosenquist. Yes. Representative Redmond? Yes. Representative Nicole? Yes. Representative Payala? Yes. Representative Gregoire? Yes. Representative Noyes? Yes. Representative Wood? Yes. Representative Kuhn? Yes. <clears throat> now I would entertain a motion to, um, I now I would entertain a motion. Um, I will move that we do not accept this bill. Okay, so a motion has been made to, um, to 
to vote no on this. Is there a second? Can Yeah. Is there a second to um, Topper's amendment? Topper's, I'll, per, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, Topper's. I'll second it. <clears throat> okay. There's been. Um, we did. Yeah, it was eight. We have to tell us what a yes and no. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So a yes um, says no to the bill. That's the way I understand. Yeah. It. Yes. yes. A, a yes vote will say no to the bill, and to the bill will die in committee. To pass the and the bill will die in committee. I see, the, the, the bill will not move forward. Scott? No second. Carl, 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 Representative Haas? No. Representative Brunstead? No. Representative Rosenquist? Yes. Representative Redman? No. Representative Nicole? No. Representative Payala? No. Representative Gregoire? Yes. Representative Noyes? No. Representative Wood? No. Representative Pugh? No. Topper's motion failed. I would entertain. I will move that we pass the bill. Is there a second? Second. Kelly seconded it. And the motion is. You accept the bill. Pass. Pass, pass the bill out of committee. Okay. Is there um, discussion? What I would like to, to have on the record, and I know that people disagree with the, with the fundamental aspects of <clears throat> this bill, um, but as we have crafted this bill, it does not change what is currently um, the policy, the legal context, policy and practice in Vermont. It does not um, allow partial birth abortion. It does not, <clears throat> um, it, does, it does not require a, a provider to participate in a procedure that they're not willing or interested to. It follows um, federal law in terms of that, and it does not craft any new law. And for that reason, I will be voting yes. Is there further discussion? I guess you're, based on your preamble, and I guess that's that's the exact reason why many of us feel it's unnecessary, because you have just stated that it doesn't change anything. Okay. That's the way I read what you said, or what you heard. It, it does so not, that's why I will be voting no. It does not divert from what is current. What it does is it puts it into statute, which makes it clearer and is another level. <clears throat> I keep saying the other because what I keep hearing from, <clears throat> what I hear from a lot of um, people um, are statements about things that they fear will happen and that have not happened in the last 40 years, <clears throat> and that they are making statements around what they think this bill will mean. And so I, people may disagree, and I get it, and people, this may fly in the face of what people believe, um, and I'm not gonna try to persuade or change anyone's view of that. I, and it probably will not reassure anyone to know but that this is not going to allow unfettered um, access. <coughs> um, Madam 
Chair? Yeah. Um, the statement about it doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. um, I think the paragraph 9494, uh, the public entity um, not allowing the legislature or the judiciary um, to, to do anything. Um, I think that does change some things. Okay, and, and Topper, we have, I know that, that I understand that you continue to believe that that's what that language says, and we have heard from legislative counsel on various times that that does not, that the legislature can always act and change law. And that's why it I, is what we are doing. And that's why I don't think it should be in there, because they can do it. I think we're adding something in there that says they can't. That, that's my only point. I, I know that okay. we can. <laughs> so why put it in there? Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Before we begin to call the roll. Representative McFawn? No. Representative Haas? Yes. Representative Brumstead? Yes. Representative Rosenquist? No. Representative Redmond? Yes. Representative Nicole? Yes. Representative Payala? Yes. Representative Gregoire? No. Representative Noyes? Yes. Representative Wood? Yes. Representative Pugh? Yes. <clears throat> the vote is a three to pass this bill out of committee um, again. <clears throat> it will um, be put on notice to um, the next step being to be referred to House Judiciary. And uh, I want to say, committee, I'm very proud of us. <laughs> um, we fundamentally disagree on many things, and um, we're, able, we're able to do it in a respectful way. I hope you all, and you will, and you will see that Bill did not um, pass out in the exact same form that it came in, um, and that um, some concerns were maybe tried to be um, addressed. Um, and I look forward to us moving forward um, on passing a few other bills that, um, in terms of that, we've got the personal needs, um, we keep pass we keep postponing um, internet sales of e-cigarettes, and there's a boatload of other things on there, and we've got Carl's bill that we may, does the health department need that right away? Uh, I'm going to have to talk to Shayla when I see her, I haven't seen Okay, her, okay, so, so we may have something that we um, need to do, um, but uh, Thank you. We have a, we have a companion bill.